There are a lot of polyglots on YouTube learning many languages simultaneously. Luca is learning Greek, Hungarian and Danish, Steve is dealing with Turkish, Arabic and Farsi, and Lindy Boots is studying five languages at the same time. Watching all these role models taking on many languages at once might motivate you to try to learn many languages simultaneously as well. You might think that it is a good idea and that you should try to pull it off too, right? Well, in this video, I want to try to dissuade you from doing this. I'll argue why you'd be better off by just focusing on one and we'll do this in a top-down manner with deductive reasoning. That is, I'll start off by mentioning certain books, authors and proverbs that support my thesis in a broad sense. Then I'll structure that information in an argument. And finally, I'll try to explain how all that applies to language learning. Ready? Let's do it. Certain people have the tendency to take on many activities simultaneously. They're interested in a lot of different topics and want to explore them all. Nonetheless, there is a plethora of knowledge out there that advises against doing this. For instance, you have best-selling books such as Essentialism and The One Thing, which are about either doing less things but focusing more on them, or about just picking one priority in your life and directing all your energy towards it. These books have become very relevant in the last decades. Given the rise of the internet, now we have a dazillion of options available. We can now find tons of hours of free educational material online, which makes it more alluring to, for instance, try to learn many skills simultaneously. But the core idea that these books are trying to convey is not a recent one. It has been around for millennia. The Stoics, the ancient Greek philosophers so revered by many authors, entrepreneurs, and politicians, were early proponents of this approach. Marcus Aurelius said that if you seek tranquility, do less, or more accurately, do what's essential. Do less, better. Another main exponent of this tradition, Seneca, the author of the Moral Letters to Lucilius, wrote that tranquility lies in not undertaking tasks, either in public or private, that are either numerous or greater than our resources. To top this off, you have a lot of sayings in different languages that point at the same phenomenon. In Spanish, we have the El que mucho abarca, poco aprieta, whose English equivalent would be don't bite off more than you can chew, or don't spread yourself too thin. On this chart, you can see a few similar examples in other tongues. From those, my favorite one is the German Man kann nicht auf zwei Hochzeiten tanzen. Then there is a popular saying in English which points at the same issue. Namely, if you run after two hairs, you'll catch neither. Which, interestingly enough, has its equivalent in the other seven languages I speak. Apparently, running after hairs must have been popular at some point in the past. In any case, all this body of wisdom is pointing at the following idea. Taking on less projects, but doing them more intensely, is going to be better than pursuing many goals simultaneously. Let's briefly explain why this is the case. Having the minimalistic approach of doing very few things is going to make you more likely to achieve the goals you set yourself up for. If you eliminate the superfluous, you're going to have more time and energy to focus on the things that really matter to you. This is true by sheer definition. Instead of devoting your time to two or three important goals, you just focus all your energies in the most important one. The result of all that is that you'll make progress quicker, which in turn will boost your motivation, which in turn will stimulate you to put in more time in that one main task. What happens when you pursue many things simultaneously though, is that you are more likely to fail at your endeavors, which is what the sayings of the hairs were claiming. This can be the case because as Marcus Aurelius said, you are more likely to be overwhelmed. Having too much going on is more likely to stress you out and to prompt you to perform poorly. Or it can be because you'll make slower progress, as some other proverbs were pointing at. This makes motivation harder to sustain, which in turn makes you less likely to keep doing the chore for a long period of time. So, to understand how all this applies to language learning, we need to understand what distinct features language learning has. And the first one is actually related to keep on going for a long time. Language learning is a long-term process. As Luca Lamparillo says, learning a language is a marathon, not a race. There are no shortcuts to mastery. You need to put in the hours. In order to reach a decent level in a language, you need to stick to it for two, five, or sometimes even 10 years. Thus, like a good marathon runner, you'll need a certain amount of endurance if you want to reach fluency. The second relevant feature of learning a foreign language is that if you leave a tongue unused, it is doomed to be forgotten. As I have explained in many instances, we're quick at forgetting what we learn. Assimilating words in your long-term memory requires many iterations, which have to be spaced over time. If you break that chain of repetitions, maybe because you stopped learning a language for a long time, then 
you'll forget most of the last words and sentences you were trying to learn. If at some point you decide to start over again, you'll have to restart at a lower level. Thus, you want to avoid quitting for a long period of time. To sum up, in order to successfully learn a language, you need at the very least the necessary stamina that will keep you moving for many months and probably years, and you also want to avoid quitting at all costs. There might certainly be many ways to avoid dropping out. I would argue that one of them would be to keep your motivation at a high level. One of the ways of doing this is by constantly making meaningful progress. Realizing that you're getting better day after day is a very energizing force, which is likely to keep you working on your languages. Having said this, let's argue why learning more than one language at the same time is more likely to derail you. Firstly, because when you learn many languages at the same time, your progress is going to be slower by definition. If you just focus on one language though, you're more likely to advance. Given that you'll have more time to study the language, you'll work on it more intensely in more depth and focus, which as Oli Richard says, leads to progress. Additionally, diversifying your efforts makes you less likely to reach momentum. According to the Encyclopedia Britannica, momentum is the product of the mass of a particle and its velocity. It is sort of the quantity of motion of a moving body. In a basic sense, the more momentum an object has, the harder it is to stop. Think of it as the momentum of a train. When a train starts up, as it accelerates, it moves very slowly. Once it gets up to speed, it stops accelerating but keeps traveling at a higher velocity. You want to reach momentum in language learning. You want to get to the point where you start going and feel unstoppable. And this is more likely to happen when you notice tangible progress, when you feel that you're getting places. This motivates you to maintain the intensity of your learning. But reaching momentum is not easy, especially if you're starting off with a new language. To continue with the analogy of the train, it takes a lot of energy to get started. What you want to avoid at all costs is to interrupt that process. Because if you do, you'd have to start over again, which is very energy demanding. And if you never fully reach momentum because you don't have the necessary time for it, it can be very draining for your motivation. And this is precisely what is more likely to happen when you learn many languages at once. Another point I want to make against learning many languages simultaneously is that any break you make is more likely to derail you. Let's assume you are forced to interrupt your learnings for a couple of weeks because you go on holidays, you get sick, or you have to move to another city. When you decide to resume your learning, you are more likely to feel overwhelmed. Retaking language learning after a break is to me sort of a similar feeling than starting with a language from scratch. Because you need to invest some time and energy in order to familiarize yourself with the language again. And if instead of just learning one language you are learning free, then starting over after a break is gonna be even more challenging. When it's time to resume your studies of Chinese, Farsi and Estonian, you're going to find it more daunting than if you were just learning one of those languages. After one of these breaks, you're more likely to say, I'm going to quit one of the three, four or five languages I'm learning and just gonna focus my energies on the others instead. And that is precisely the scenario you want to avoid. That was it for today. I hope you found it interesting and that I dissuaded you from taking on more than one language. If I did not, well, then I guess you should check out my next video, which is all about how to learn many languages simultaneously. A la prochaine.